It's hard to imagine what Davis County's image would be like today without Antelope Island. The Davis Area Convention and Visitors Bureau, which is the destination marketing organization for Davis County, sells and promotes Davis County as home of the Great Salt Lake. Visitors from all over the world want to come and experience and see the Great Salt Lake because they learn about it in geography. That's what they equate Utah to and Davis County is home to this. There's no question that uh, when you have a park that uh, is as remarkably wonderful as Antelope Island and with the mystique of an island as well uh, and how it brings many many people to the area and to the state that it has to have a tremendous economic benefit to the local cities, the county. Uh, being the only state park in Davis County it provides just a great economic boon to that. It's something that we wouldn't have if we didn't have that causeway in place. It's the road to uh, Davis County's treasure, natural treasure. But the causeway wasn't always seen in such a positive light. There was a time when the state's governor called it the road to nowhere. It was a time when the dream of tourists and residents visiting the island lived only in the minds of a few men who were willing to take a gamble. I'm so thrilled that we have that plaque out there entitled The Road to Nowhere. And literally, when the county started building that road, that's exactly what happened. They were building that road right out in the middle of the lake or towards the lake, but they had no place to go. I mean, they, they didn't have own any, any property out there to go to, but they had the faith that once they started the road and got the road out there, maybe the legislature and the state would say, hey, we've done more than our part. Now you guys go ahead and finish it. It was in the 1950s and 60s when the seed of a dream found root with a group of men who had the vision, courage, and energy to make the causeway a reality. We'd uh, given a lot of thought to going out and building this road down Lope Island, even though we didn't own a foot. This group, though small in number, packed a punch. County Commissioners Wayne Weiniger, Gene Tolman, Glenn Flint, and Dr. Evan Taylor would join Utah legislators William Holt and Haven Barlow as the visionaries with the work ethic to back their dream. Known today as the Davis County Brain Trust, it was these men whose faith changed the face of Davis County. I was born and raised in Woods Cross and never had been in the lake. Uh, I went to Hawaii in 1940, as we were there when the war started, and uh, we had a little film that we showed as we visited people. And one of the main pictures showed salt air with all the people floating and so on, and I, with others, told what an experience that was and had never been in the lake. When I got home, I tried to get in the lake. I wanted to salve my conscience, I guess, and uh, went to salt air, couldn't get in the lake, black rock, couldn't get in the lake. And I determined at that time that if I ever got into a position where I could get people on that island and into the water, that I'd do it. I remember that we got on our horses and we went out there as far as we could. We, the, the water was, was up to their stomach so we couldn't go out any further, and it looked like it was only about a half a mile further, but we just couldn't get out to the island. I remember Bill Holt coming to my home, and he left uh, about four or five hours later, one o'clock in the morning, and uh, my wife wondered what in the world was going on. And Bill Holt was trying to find out if I got in the county commission, I would support the building of a road out to Antelope Island. And Bill didn't know that I had a, a great passion to get out to Antelope Island. 
And I said, Bill, I, I'll do everything I can. But there were plenty of obstacles in their way. First and foremost was the opinion of the State Corps of Engineers. When the state of Utah assigned a feasibility study to the Department of Transportation, the study concluded a roadway to the island was physically near impossible and very expensive. An estimated price tag was more than $15 million. $15 million back in those days would be probably at least $40 to $50 million a day. And it was just impossible to get anything done. Wayne and his, his people were, were just to the point where uh, they just decided they they're were going to do something about it. 1963 was a low water point in the lake level history. Contractors knew that the best building time would be at a low lake level, but bringing the road to reality would require some innovation and a willingness to take a chance. Those involved decided to see if the salt and other lake deposits would be strong enough to hold the road in place. The lake in most places is about 26 percent salt. That salt was the the base I think they made history in one way is the, the, uh, the great brains in our state uh, engineers uh, would say that you can't use that muck as a base. The first time you have a storm, it's going to wash away. And, uh, but they went ahead and, and started digging and, and, and put in about five, what, five, five and a half miles of road. When Governor Clyde, he looked at me and said, Commissioner, I do not believe, now here's a road builder, man of the plan. I don't believe in building roads the way you're doing out there at Antelope Island. I just said, Governor, uh, I don't either. You can't do it any other way. Lo and behold, when that muck and that salt that was part of it was able to dry out, they found out they had a real solid base. And they didn't know about it. The engineers didn't even know about it. So, uh, so we, we taught them something. <laughs> but their creative thinking didn't start and stop with a decision on what they'd use for a base. I got on the phone and called every city in Davis County and said, we're in trouble out here. We need some help. Every city came with a truck and, and most smaller cities would have a backhoe. And every city but one came with just that telephone call. Officials diverted county road employees to the project. You'd be surprised how many people were interested enough to come and work free. In addition to Dale T. Smedley's equipment, some other heavy equipment arrived in a somewhat mysterious way. I think that's a great story about that other cat, you know, that came from Hillfield. <laughs> we don't like to talk a lot about them. And nobody was asking any questions. As work began on the road, the weather turned out to be a huge obstacle. You'd never know how bad a weather you get out there on that lake unless you're there and see it and feel it. The weather was to blame for the death of one worker. He was in a fog where you couldn't see anything, but he was on the causeway and he hit a grader or a bulldozer and killed him outright. Once they came within a mile of the island, suddenly the road now is not an impossibility. Now we can go to the legislature and say, hey, we only, we're only talking about a mile of road now. And then we were able to get the funds to uh, complete the road. And, and so the road to nowhere finally had a home. And then the water covered the road. As luck would have it, the, race, the, 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 the water started rising. We started having a wet, wet year. To have that water 10 foot over that road, for some time, and uh, those who loved to, to, to cry, uh, Wayne, your road's gone. Wayne, your road's gone. We had certain people in the legislature reminded us, well, we told you. So we were having some real difficult getting some money to, to uh, build up the road. And finally, the, the county commission, and they finally said, hey, we'll, you give us $5 million and we'll assume the responsibility and we'll make sure that that road is put in. Once we got the causeway over there and the owners were able to get to their, their uh, island, uh, their ranch, 24 hours a day, it was a benefit to them too. 
So that was one of the reasons why they're willing to sell us the 2,000 acres. Soon the state would own all of Antelope Island, fulfilling a dream of six visionaries, a brain trust of men who had believed against all odds that such a dream could one day become a reality. We finally was able to have it done in our generation. Isn't that wonderful? Previous generations, back to statehood, uh, never had the opportunity. I applaud the visionaries for having the foresight of putting um, the program in place and securing the funding to make it happen, to make that causeway a reality. Today, the causeway is anything but a road to nowhere because of the belief and efforts of these men.